What's the biggest problem we face as ham radio operators? According to RF engineer Yuri Van Duren, ON6URE, it is common mode current. It contributes to high noise levels that plague so many stations, seriously ruining the on-air experience. And what causes common mode current? Imbalance. Unbalanced antenna systems are very popular now in fed half-wave, off-center fed, popular because they're cheap and multi-band. It's one reason why so many hams have problems with high receiver noise levels and RF in the shack. Now, high noise can also be caused by local devices and power line noise, but this video will focus on what we can control imbalance, and unwanted current on the feed line and station wiring, and how to do it. We tend to lump all together all such unwanted RF as common mode current, but that isn't really true. If you're getting RF bytes when you transmit, that's not common mode current. <laughs> Just got a bug bite. Let's see where RF in the shack comes from and what common mode current really is. Also, how balance can be achieved even with an unbalanced antenna design. Here's a diagram of a perfectly balanced dipole and its coax transmission line. Current flows on the inner conductor, represented by this line, and return current flows only on the inside of the shield, represented by this dotted line. Now these two currents are differential, equal and opposite in polarity, so their magnetic fields cancel, and everything's balanced. Now what's this third dotted line? At RF, coax behaves as three conductors. The inner conductor, the inside of the shield, and the outside of the shield. It's like coax cable is three wires instead of two. Now if the antenna is balanced, the current does not flow on this outer shield, the third conductor. It stays on the inside of the shield where it belongs because everything's nice and balanced. No RF in the shack problems. What happens when an antenna system is unbalanced? Undesirable things. Some of the RF current returns by unintended paths, including the outside of the coax shield. It's like this third conductor is now active and connected and part of the antenna. It's a mathematical fact that when an antenna system is unbalanced, any current that does not return on the intended path, that's the inside of the coax shield, must find another way back. Kirchhoff's current law says the total current entering a node, like an antenna, must equal the total current leaving it. Current can't disappear. It must complete a loop. Therefore, the missing return current flows through whatever parasitic capacitances and conductors are available. This means RF can be coupled onto other conductors by capacitance when the system is unbalanced. It's like having a bunch of small capacitors between the coax shield and things like house wiring, a metal antenna support, even your rain gutters. With an unbalanced antenna, the outside of the coax shield becomes active as that third conductor, making it part of the antenna. That conductor is usually long, runs through the house, and is surrounded by electrical wiring and electronics, so 
It's an excellent RF noise antenna. Many devices in our homes create this RF noise. Switched mode power supplies like this little 5 volt phone charger are a major offender. This RF noise couples to the outside of the coax shield as common mode current. That is current that is not balanced by an equal and opposite current. All of these problems result from an unbalanced antenna system. On transmit, some RF current flows on the outside of the coax shield and through station wiring. This creates RF voltage on your equipment and even on you because your body is a conductor. In receive mode, the same path makes all the station wiring a pipeline for local RF noise to couple directly into the feed line as common mode current raising the noise floor of your receiver. Here's your house now. In review so far, what allows common mode current in the coax and RF in the shack? The root of the problem is imbalance. How many times have you heard AMS complain of high noise levels like S7 or even higher? That could be because of an unbalanced antenna like the infed half wave when the ham has not created a proper return path and made efforts to block common mode current on the coax shield. Now, it does not have to be that way. Infed half waves can be quiet when the return path is controlled and common mode current is blocked. Without that, the feed line becomes part of the antenna and picks up local noise. All right, so what's the solution for all these problems caused by imbalance? Well, for that, we go to the rf.guru website, and this article, Common Mode Current is the Biggest Problem in Ham Radio. First things first, though, if the antenna is unbalanced, create a proper return so current won't be riding on the outside of the shield and everything else. Now, let's look at the infed half wave as an example, since it's so popular. Same principles can apply to other antennas. We'll start reading here. If you don't provide an explicit counterpoise, wire radials is defined return conductor at the transformer, the system will happily borrow the outside of the coax shield as that return path for some distance. In that context, hard choking the coax means placing a strong one-to-one -one current choke right at or immediately below the transformer. So the antenna system is forced to close its current loop locally on the counterpoise you provided instead of using the feed line. Putting the choke 5% wavelength down the coax can still work, but it deliberately allows that first section of coax to act as part of the antenna counterpoise, which makes performance and noise pickup far more sensitive to routing, height, and nearby objects. All right, so you've provided a proper counterpoise, like a separate wire or a section of the coax shield. So are we done? Uh, no. One choke is barely enough. A single choke at one point can help, but it often does not control the whole system because the coax has multiple places where it can be excited and multiple places where noise current can enter. So the right mindset is not install a choke, it is build a choking system. Three zone choke habit. If you want a simple rule that works for most real stations, especially multiband, think in three zones, antenna, building entry, and station. So one choke at the antenna, another choke before it comes into your house, and then another choke before the coax goes into your transceiver. What if you have a balanced antenna like a dipole? Does that mean you don't need a choke? Well, in the real world, there's no such thing as a perfectly balanced antenna. 
A current ballon at the feed point reduces feed line radiation and pattern distortion, RF in the shack, and noise picked up by the feed line, even for a dipole. A choke can't eliminate real atmospheric or man-made noise picked up by the antenna itself, but it often dramatically reduces house noise. Same goes for a quarter-wave vertical, which is an unbalanced antenna. A proper radial system provides the intended return, and a choke helps keep the feed line from being part of that. Put the choke at or just below the feed point. Now we see why the dipole is such a great, quiet antenna. Even better is a doublet fed with actual ladder line. It's an inherently balanced antenna system that can work all HF bands. Now, ladder line needs good spacing from metal, and you'll want a good balanced tuner. And if your tuner is asymmetric, it only has a coax input, transition from ladder line to coax with a good one-to-one -one current balance. Even open wire line can support common mode if routed asymmetrically near metal. One side of the feed line closer to the metal than the other, for example. But ladder line is generally less prone to acting like a random house noise antenna when installed with good spacing and symmetry. With a ladder line fed balanced antenna system installed correctly, you don't have to have these balance problems we've just described. And the doublet has been around for how long? A hundred years? How much progress have we made with these newfangled antennas? Bottom line. Many S8 noise floor stations are the result of an unbalanced antenna. No proper return path, no chokes on the coax feed line, and non-compliant SMPS trash in your house. Consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell for updates in 73.